Hello and welcome to Life Questions. I'm your host, Bill Harris. We're glad you could join us for what we hope will be an informative discussion about some of life's major issues from a biblical perspective. We appreciate the many questions that you, our viewers, are sending in every week, and we have invited a panel of local pastors today to provide some biblical insight into your concerns. I'd like you to meet these gentlemen right now. First, we have Pastor Bill Watson of the Pentecostal Way Church, Van Wert, Ohio, and the Turn Right, Go Straight Recovery Ministry. Next, we have Pastor Russ Thomas of The Gathering Place and New Creation Lutheran in Elida, Ohio followed by Pastor Dave Burkhardt of Westminster United Methodist Church in Westminster, Ohio. And rounding off our panel, Pastor Paul Hamrick of the Hope Chapel Van Wert, Ohio, and the New Hope Recovery Ministry. And I should say that all these ministries are involved in drug recovery programs in our community. Uh, we talked about this extensively last week, and we're picking up uh, where we left off, gentlemen. One of the things I keep hearing is that there is not enough concentrated discipleship going on with recovering addicts to help to keep them, to help them to transition from that world into the world of Christ and stay in the church. Is that right, Pastor Hammond? Well, it's important because I think for a long time, and I used to do this a lot, you would uh, tell somebody, all your problems go away, just you know, ask Jesus to be your savior, okay? But really scripturally, mm -hmm. Romans 10, 9, 10 doesn't talk anything about savior, it's lordship. We have not taught our people lordship. That's why the church is in the mess it is, okay? Mm -hmm. That's why we have churches fighting among each other because Christ is not Lord. The issue is, he says, unless he's Lord, I truly believe he's not savior. I think we've given people a false security. Well, I go to church, I'm a good person, I'm okay with this here. Oh, I'm, I'm not drinking, I'm not doing drugs right now, so I'm okay, but Christ needs to be Lord. Mm -hmm. And you have to model that and you have to share with that. That means casting all your cares upon him, mm -hmm. realizing that he is the only one that's going to get us out of this problem. We need to get them one born again. We need to get them filled with the Holy Spirit. We need the power of God flowing in them because the devil has already got them marked yes. for death. Yes, he has. And he's very upset when you bring him because we saw our ministries at the gates of hell. We're grabbing them right before they get out. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we've got to grab a hold of them with all the things. And you've got to love them with the love that only God gives. And the church needs to step in, up on that. Mm -hmm. So true. Yeah, so the uh, with, with Christ being the head of the body, the body is guided by the Holy Spirit. The body is here to do the work. Jesus is not coming back to do the work. So we are to disciple that one-on-one -on -one situation. And a lot of these folks have never had a family modeled to, to understand what a family is. So we had a, a young man who was incarcerated twice since he's been coming to our church and we continue to support him financially. And, and he saw that as family. He said, people who take care of me are my family. And then when he was released from incarceration, uh, he came back into the body and we just started from square one again. And that's what this is. Um, There's a lot of men that didn't give up on me and kept allowing me go, to go back to square one again. And um, they had the grace for me. So that's our job is to have the grace for them. Uh, Hebrews, in Hebrews 13, it says, remember those in prison as if you were their fellow prisoner. And, and that's what we need to do. We can't just leave those people sit idly by without even discipling them while they're incarcerated. Yes, mm -hmm. so important. You know, like you said, the discipling is so important and uh, we do the best we can to disciple them uh, because we know that the word of God is the thing that will sustain you. Uh, we have a material that we go through is called clean, uh, clean, sober and saved. Uh, mm -hmm. And because, you know, you can be clean, you can be sober, but unsaved. So mm -hmm. what good is it to go, you know, uh, go through life just being clean and just being sober. Well, a person needs to be saved. If you're going to go to heaven, you got to be saved. You be you're saved. not going to get in just being clean and, and sober. You've got to be <laughs> saved. So uh, we, we're using some excellent material that we get from uh, Daryl Strawberry's ministry. His wife, Tracy Strawberry, along with Daryl Strawberry, the famous baseball player, uh, they have uh, really contributed to our ministry and helped us with material and things to help people. And it's a great, great study. So we use that to help people because I found out that one of the stigmas that they have is that they can't forgive themselves. They have a problem with forgiving themselves mm. and trying to convince them that, you know, uh, God has forgiven you. So it's time yeah. for you to forgive yourself. Yeah. He's not holding it to your charge. Yeah. We can start afresh. We can start new. Yeah. But it's hard trying to get people to forgive themselves. Yeah. So the Word of God says that um, well, the, uh, addiction is an unclean spirit. And the Word of God says when an unclean spirit comes out of a man. So when a man gets clean, 
it roams arid places yes. and then it comes back and if that house is swept clean which is empty it brings seven more worse yes. than the first yes. so the goal here is through discipleship and the holy spirit and the spiritual gifts is to allow someone the opportunity that when they are set free and that unclean spirit does leave them they must immediately fill themselves with the holy spirit or they could be under a larger attack yeah, in the yeah. future. So it's, it's, it's demonic and it's so, mm -hmm. the Bible comes to life as we work with these folks, yeah. seriously. Yeah, so, okay. so true, uh, Pastor Russ, is that, uh, you know, that spirit is going to be filled and we determine who's going to fill it. There you go. And that's so important. So hopefully we will get it filled with God's spirit, Amen. you see, because there's many spirits, mm -hmm. you know, but we want to be filled with God's spirit, the Holy Spirit. And that's mm -hmm. so important. We've heard a lot of talk about uh, discipleship here, and, and I think the best way that discipleship happens is definitely one-on-one. -on -one. And so we need to be able to, to meet with these people and, and help them uh, to understand God in a new way, but to understand how God's people are supposed to work as well. In other words, um, one story that comes back to me, uh, one of our greatest success stories, uh, was a young lady who got out and we my wife and I invited her and her boyfriend to come over and share a meal with us and and they sat there almost dumbfounded like well, what do we do next and I'm like well <laughs> let's start passing food and, and they go we've never sat at a table like this before my goodness. I mean it's a it's a complete mind change a yes. complete um, oh. you know just different way of life yeah. and um, and very proud of her she uh, she's married now Three kids, lives in Tennessee. Her and her husband both have good jobs. Uh, Wonderful. Fantastic. And, and part of that is because the folks in our church did rally behind them, uh, help them out, um, you know, financially and, and spiritually. And people just really loved on them. Uh -huh. yes. and, and that's a big part of it. One of Excellent. the things that I accidentally discovered recently is that um, when we as believers see someone take those steps forward into Christ and they grow from that and they recover from their addiction. All we see is the positive and we celebrate the positive. But for those people who sit at Dave Burkhart's table, um, that change, even though it's positive, is still very traumatic and it can really throw them off. Mm -hmm. To have mm -hmm. something positive happen, I left what I know even though it was negative. Even though it's positive, it, it's still a traumatic change that could cause a relapse because it's overwhelming to them. Yes. It's, it's, it's almost mind boggling, but it's, but it's true. So true. Mm -hmm. Well, thank God for the, were you gonna say something? Well, Go ahead. Addicts are great at understanding people. They know when you're real and when you're not, mm -hmm. okay? And too many times in the church, we've said, oh yeah, we like you, but don't come back next week. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. be honest with you, the way they act, treat them. Yeah. And they wonder why they see no place there. They know reality. And they're great de deception. They can tell when you're deceiving. So we need to check our hearts. We need to see, is my heart, do I love them as Christ loved them? Or are they just a number I'm checking off? Mm -hmm. Okay, do I care enough to get my hands dirty? Because most people don't want to get dirty. When you're working with addicts, you're dealing with dirt. Amen. Okay? Mm -hmm. The enemy has got them full of darkness and hate and unforgiveness, as you said, brother, is one of the key um, strongholds. Yes. Until you break the stronghold, yeah. you won't free them. You won't free them. Yeah. Yeah, I think one of the things that we've seen in, in our churches uh, is the fact that um, we'll continue to love on you as long as you stay clean and sober, but you relapse, psh, we're going to dump you off to the side. Yeah. Like we're the, we're the only place that shoots our wounded, you know, we, we really do. And, and it's, it's terrible yeah. sometimes, yeah. but, uh, you know, if we're going to help somebody, we need to be all in and, and really willing to help. I guess if you're going to get into this drug recovery work, particularly in terms of a ministry, not just a social uh, type of an approach, but as a ministry, right. you better count the cost before you get in, right? Absolutely. No doubt. Absolutely. And you Good. better hope that, you know, definitely that God's called you to do this yeah. because uh, there's no way I would have taken on this task, you know, unless I know that the Lord had said, no, this is what I want you to do. And mm -hmm. uh, so we've been doing it. This it's a slow right. work. It's, it's a slow work. It, mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't always uh, uh, you see the rewards right away. But you have to be patient and be steady. See, God didn't call us to be successful. He called us to be faithful. And now I'm a firm believer of that, of Amen. being faithful to the task. Amen. And this isn't a ministry where you start your day and put on your armor when you enter into the battle. You better be armored up before you leave the house because if you truly have the heart to serve, God is going to put people in your path at the, at the most inconvenient yes. moment. Yeah, and I find out that... that, that um, I know God is working in my life when 
my priorities get all messed up. So you have to be prayerfully ready to start the day before you leave the house, armored up, spiritually armored up, because if not, you, you don't you don't want to be standing out there in your underwear putting your armor on when the battle starts. <laughs> That's the truth. Because this is demonic. <laughs> Brother said it, it's demonic. It's yeah, unclean. Exactly. You know, and so each day you've got, at least I do, I, I, when I go before the Father, I say, Lord, pour your love into yes. me. I, I, I mean, seriously, pour your love, love into me. Because like you say, when you least expect it, this is when, you know, you're going to run into this situation and you, you have to be ready. You, yeah. got, you can't say, well, wait a minute, <laughs> I'll be back. No, you got to deal with it right there on the spot. So and love, a, love covers oh. withdrawal. We, we, we did baptisms in a creek out here on Irvin Road just a few weeks ago. And one of our young men, he had to run from the baptismal area to vomit yes. because he was still in, in active withdrawal. Mm -hmm. So what do you do in a case like that? If you put love, the cover of love on first, yes. it will cover any situation yes. that you deal with. Goodness. That's what wow. he says. Tell him all the two to say. Amen, brother. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Well, all right. Listen, thank you for, the, for that, that conversation. Yes. And we're going to turn our attention to something else when we come back. But I just want to, to mention for those of you in our audience that we had a full-blown conversation about drug recovery on last week's program that we continued over into this segment today. Uh, when we come back, I'd like to talk about what's going on right now politically in our, in our, in our society, well, around the country for that matter. Uh, people who are writing us and telling us that they don't know that they really want to even vote because they're not all that happy with the candidates. We'll talk about the politics as soon as we get back, right after this. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pasture suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. We're back and we're glad that you stayed with us. We're turning our attention now to some of the uh, other issues that are more pressing. And uh, these would be issues involving um, negative feelings about the presidential campaign. This is a, another letter that we got from a viewer. What are your thoughts on this? And uh, people are looking for uh, answers. What, what about negative feelings about the presidential campaign? Well, there certainly is a, a lot of negative feelings and I think it stems uh, right from from those who are, are seeking the highest office in the land. They're so negative towards each other. Um, I, I talked about this in church a, a while back, uh, about how the lack of respect in this nation has, has gone downhill just terribly in the last, um, I would say probably 20 years. It's been on a steady downcline, yes. uh, decline. And, um, and you know, all the, all the issues that we're seeing right now is, it has to do with the lack of respect and the lack of, of I guess, um, the lack of respect for authority. Um, and, and I don't think that the, the candidates are, are demonstrating the, the respect that people need to see modeled for them. Mm -hmm. So well, it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing. It's so chaotic that, you know, a lot of, a lot of Christians are, and Christ followers are, are looking at this and it's, it's fearful almost because it feels like it's out of control. And, and um, this is where the love of Christ comes in and, and allows us to overlook all those things and be able to, uh, I'm, I'm trying to come up with the word I want to say here, but, but um, the Bible says that, that there is no one in authority without God's ordination, basically. Mm -hmm. So, exactly. so um, the Bible also says, and this is just prophetically coming true, the, the end times as they approach, that the, the love of man will grow cold. So um, you almost can look at this chaos, if you have the right heart, look at it with joy as the scriptures are coming to life they before are. our very eyes they on are. our television mm -hmm. screens and in our newspapers, you know, the, the prophetic word and rapture ministries, you know, you, you know these things, you see these mm -hmm. signs mm -hmm. and wonders that are happening yeah. and, and uh, this is just the Bible coming true right before our very eyes. I, I do think strongly though that, um, that all that's going on right now has caused people to be more aware and there's more of an urgency to 
uh, be prepared for the end of times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People, people are really curious right now, sure. and it's our opportunities as pastors yeah. to be able to share with them what yeah. the Bible says yeah. and, and how we can be ready when Christ returns. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, the Bible declares that, you know, uh, that the love of many will wax cold mm -hmm. in the last days. And but yet uh, we must understand is that we are a country of laws. Uh, thank God for that, you know, because uh, and God is not an author of confusion. And uh, we must respect authority. And like you said, Pastor, we, we've lost the respect uh, for uh, those in authority. In fact, uh, uh, the Bible tells us, in fact, in First Timothy, chapter two, and I do have it right here. And it's in, it's in First Timothy chapter two, and looking at verse one, it says, "I," ex he says, "I exhort therefore that first of all, all supplication, prayer, intercession, oh, yes. and giving of thanks, uh, to those who are in authority." Yes. In fact, the Bible says there in verse two, it says, "For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all." godliness and honesty. Mm. So I think it's very important that we understand as Christians, we may uh, agree or disagree. Uh, we have to do it respectively. Uh, and, uh, and we have to respect authority because right now our sitting president is, uh, it would be in a sense, the king. Uh, we may not always agree, but we still must do things decent and in order. Let's turn our attention to masks. Another controversial issue. Mm -hmm. uh, some people feel that, well, you, you got to look at science and science is science is science is telling us that this is the way we can protect ourselves. Others feel that, no, this is an imposition of my personal rights. If I don't want to wear a mask, I don't have to wear a mask. Well, one of the questions we got in from viewers is, do we have to wear this mask? So what, what do you I, think? I look what at you? it like this. That you mentioned the science and it's perfect. Um, you know, science has shown that the survival rate of wearing a seatbelt it's the, the numbers are there, the data is there, and it's consistent data versus the mask. Um, you know, when, when, when the mandates first came out, I abided by them. But then as, as I started seeing the inconsistencies in, in enforcement and the inconsistencies in applying, um, to me, this was a moot point. So uh, myself personally, I just didn't see the point in, in wearing one anymore. And um, it's, it's no different than I'm washing my hands more frequently. I'm sanitizing my hands more, just like we would in the regular flu season. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm looking for consistencies. If you can show me consistencies, I'll, I'll follow the mandate. But without them, um, no, I'm it's not going to. It's kind of hard to do it. But yeah. you know, the thing is, I must keep in mind as well, and I think all of you gentlemen would agree, as Christians, and especially being men of leaders, I mean, we're leaders in our churches and communities. Uh, you know, I don't like wearing the mask. It's uncomfortable for me. But uh, when I go to Walmart, whatever they require that you wear one, I wear one. Uh, the Bible tells us not to cause one to stumble. And uh, if I were to be in there with a person who was, who was a Christian and, and I didn't have my mask on, they would say, well, Pastor, you're, you know, you're not complying with the laws and things. And so, so I found it to be a lot easier. Okay, just go ahead. You know, if the store required that we do that, if that be the case, then I'll put it on. Once I leave the store, I take off the mask. This way, no one's offended. Okay. That's just me personally. My personal opinion. Again, it's personal. I believe the mask is social engineering going on right now. And I don't think it's going to And define to help. that, if you will. Well, that uh, you've got one group that says you've got to have it, those that don't, and we're just trying to think and do it. They told us first we should not wear a mask, and then we're going to wear a mask. I have family that are in the medical field. Most of my family are, okay? Most people, the mask you have aren't going to do anything, to be honest. Correct. Unless you've got an N95, just got some money to invest into it, it's not going to do much. I truly believe washing your hands is probably a little bit more of a thing we need to do in spreading. My wife and I got the virus back in February. You did? Yes, on the way to Hawaii. And so I understand going through the virus and surviving the virus and all that there. But the issue comes back to it, uh, taking respect, okay? And so we were praying about this. What should we do as Christians, okay? I agree. Uh, they watch us as leaders. Yeah. And so what our mission did, we decided to put Jesus as Lord. So we're going to take a proactive. If I got to wear a mask, I might as well. Everybody out there sees me. And they're saying in their mind, Jesus is Lord. Yes. We don't witness. This is a, I call this passive witnessing. But yes. I think we need to come back and be proactive in that aspect. Not to disdain people who don't or don't do it, okay? I mean, it's got to place it. It's political. It's, people want to fight over it. They've attacked each other. You know, and I realize that. But we do honor those around us. But why not go on the offensive instead of always being on the defensive, okay? Mm -hmm. The word that every man and woman will say one day is Jesus is Lord. We might as well get them started doing it now, okay? <laughs> and I watched them in Walmart. 
without their mask on, with their lips saying, Jesus is Lord. They're reading it. Amen. So, Maybe right. nobody's told them that that day, but at least they've seen it. No, and I think we need to do that more. With what Pastor here said, you know, um, when, when I go to a store, if, if they're insisting on me wearing a mask, then I'll either wear the mask or I just won't go into their, their store. I'm going to exactly. respect what they're saying. You know what? Mm -hmm. um, they all pretty much have a condition that I should wear a shirt when I go in, and I will. They don't want to see that. <laughs> so, you know, I'm going to advise by what this scared. is a free country. Yeah, they be careful. This is a family show. Yes. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, but I'm going to respect what their policies are when I sure, go in there. And if, sure. I, if I don't agree with what their policies are, then I just won't patronize their business. Exactly. It's as simple as that. I'm not going to fight anyone or argue with anyone over that mm -hmm. topic. I, I really didn't understand that. I've, I've studied the book of Revelation several times and how, how Antichrist could take control of the world so much. So easy. And, and now we swing into this mask what issue and, and, and I'm seeing how, how people really will conform um, when, when mandates come down. Absolutely. And, and I'm not opposed to masks. Uh, right. I'll wear a mask when, when people ask me to. Uh, I've also been in situations where people go, Pastor, don't you have enough faith to remove that mask? And I'll say, yeah, I do. I, and I'll take it off. And, yeah. and, and it doesn't bother me either way. But um, you, know, you know, Pastor, I found out that uh, really it's been amazing to me that uh, those who I thought was really solid Christians, I mean, they're just scared to death. You know, and the Bible tells us that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I say, well, you know, why don't you exhibit a little bit of that faith you have? And uh, I mean, it's just amazing. And I really thought they were more solid. And, 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 well, I, and let me say this, I'm not judging by any means, but I'm just saying, is not God able to keep us? And you know, the sad part of this is, is I, I haven't been doing this very long, 12 years I've been in a relationship with God. And the first time I came across the scripture where it says, mother will be against daughter and father against son and, and parent mm -hmm. against child. And, and I, it broke my heart to think, how is this ever gonna happen? And, and we're seeing it. Yes. We're seeing yes. it over simple yes. societal issues that, that the enemy has got involved and, and changed our hearts to where we hate each other. Mm -hmm. And it's just so sad, but yes. it's, mm -hmm. it's, I see how he can do it now. You, you know, let me say, but, because you, you're so right. I, I was just talking to a family member and, uh, they are so, I mean, hostile. I mean, when you start talking about politics, they just, you can't even reason with them. And so we don't even talk about it, you know, but it's sad. And, and, and they say they love the Lord and, and we can't just have a, just a decent discussion. But like you said, it is causing division without, yeah. without a doubt. And I think well, the holiday's coming too. You know, maybe yeah. social distancing is going to be the best to keep families together and survive <laughs> these coming holidays. Yeah. Well, we got in another uh, letter too that I wanted to share with you about. And this viewer was asking, is there absolute truth? My brother tells me there is not. But it seems to me that the idea of a changing truth really is the cause of so many of today's problems, which puts me in the mind of uh, they're probably talking about situation ethics. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but that's where what may be true in one, truthful in one situation or one set of circumstances, it, it won't work in another. So you change the truth to, sit, to suit that circumstance. So what, what do you think? Is there absolute truth? Well, Jesus is absolute truth. There you go. And, uh, you know, and I think that we've lost a lot of that uh, in the in the churches, I mean, we've compromised, and it, it's hurt uh, it's hurt uh, the churches. It's uh, it truly has. Uh, we are to stand firm on God's word. The Bible says God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change, and neither does His word. And so the Bible says that we're not to conform to the world. You see, that's something that we must understand. Uh, the Bible says, "Be in the world, but don't be of the world." Mm -hmm. You see, so we're not to conform to the ways of this world. Okay. That, that's my opinion. I like when you read, I think it was Pilate, Pilate or Herod, when they asked Jesus yeah. what is truth. You know, there's so many different ways he could have said that, but mm -hmm. did he understand he was speaking to the author of truth? Yeah. But he he, did he say it as what is truth? Was he being sarcastic yeah. or was he well, actually he turned and asking, walked away after yeah, that and went over to address the crowd. Total sarcasm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, what is truth? And he was speaking to the author of truth. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think the yeah. church today is lukewarm because we allow truth. Right. What this man says, that man says, well, what does the word of God say? Right. There's the issue we got to, because that's what's going to take us to heaven or hell. And we have to make that choice. What are we going to do in this day and age? And sometimes it's easy to stand, to back up and not say anything, not do anything. I don't want to make right. anybody mad. But truth, we need to, the Bible says we need to share the truth with people with love, not with meanness, that's right. not with, you know, I'm going to beat them up over the head. I'm going to kill that person. We're seeing this. That's got to stop. Yes. We got to right. see that every person's been made in the image of God. Our battle is not with flesh and blood. It's not with the other party. It's principalities, powers, and wickedness in high places. Mm -hmm. And we need to get on our knees. We need to be praying. We need to be filled up with the word of God and the truth of the gospel so we can 
see people set free. Because our nation right now, who would have thought in this short time, mm -hmm. we would shut down the world? Mm -hmm. yeah. We're seeing revelation yes. come. Yes. Okay? Either we're going to do something about it or not. It's it, not that we hide in the it's ground. It's like a precursor. It's like a precursor. Yeah, exactly. It comes down to how you swing that two-edged sword. You know, you can either cut someone free from bondage with it or cut them in half with with judgment and hatred. So you got to be careful how you swing that sword. And when you come to truth, once again, the Bible says, let God be true Amen. and every man a liar. Yeah. Well, and yeah. I think we need to ask ourselves the questions, why would we not want absolute truth? Why would we not confess that there's absolute truth? And, and the reason is because we want things our way. And if right. we say that there's absolute truth, we may have to say we're wrong. <laughs> and, and that's good. Pat. Mm -hmm. How Very often good. are we wrong? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Here's one more question we have time for. Gentlemen, we're just about out of time, but with the impact of COVID-19 on in-person gatherings, what is the future of the church? Some churches still have not, uh, have refrained from meeting in person. I, I'd really like to address this. Go because, ahead. Go ahead. Because I think the future of the church is as bright as it's ever been. Um, this, this has really caused us to take a look at how we do ministry. And, and that we can do ministry in other ways besides gathering right at our church. Now, we at Westminster, we've continued to gather. Um, we, we did uh, parking lot gatherings for a while, mm -hmm, drive-in mm -hmm. service. Uh, that was just another way to, to get that out there and, and to continue to be together. There's uh, so many more churches that are using Facebook and uh, YouTube and looking for other ways to do ministry. I think that the future of the church is brighter than it's ever been. I agree. I agree. I, I just, yeah. Just so you know, uh, we uh, live stream our programs, mm -hmm. and I tell you, I mean, it's just the the viewers have just shot up during this time of this COVID virus, and so we see people tuning in a lot who are, you know, who are just afraid of what they're going through in this nation and around the world, and people will become very inquisitive. What's going on? And so we've seen a lot of hits. Uh, so people are, they're 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 concerned. Yeah. They're very concerned. Fear can definitely work to our yeah. advantage and cause people to turn to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Fear yeah. Lord, man. But those but, who, some, some will say, this is much more convenient just to sit at home and watch from home. You mm -hmm. know, but I, I think what, what, you, what you're missing and what they're starting to realize they're missing is that each person that walks into that church is a body part. And you sit and watch that body start to build and grow as the service begins to take place. You know, they miss the testimonies. They miss the, the little things that the body does before we tune in. You're so right. You, can you do it in about 10 seconds? Yes, I'm The church is more than a building. Okay, nothing wrong with that. But we got to be the church outside the four walls. Maybe it's a time, as they did back in uh, biblical times when they, uh, the disciples dispersed because they're being torn. God did a lot of things in Philippi and then other things were mm -hmm. happening because the church got outside the four walls. Amen. Let's be the church outside the four Amen. walls. Okay, that's all the time we have. Gentlemen, we thank you so much for all the fine comments Thanks and all the enlightenment. All right, very good. Well, that's our program for today. Uh, we'll be back again next week at this same time, so make sure you stay tuned. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. Have a wonderful day and stay safe. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.